Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is market presidential polls, question mark. We've got a lot of information as we approach the end of September, the beginning of October. We're going into uh, looking at the election in November, market volatility with uh, COVID still out there, a lot of changes taking place, whether it's your child going to school or people still meeting virtually. But with that said, we had a great debate on portfolio strategies, and I'm joined today by my colleagues, Bobby Norman, Trey Booth, Adam Van Zandt, and Ashley Page. Bobby, I'm going to ask you first to start off because you brought up some interesting information regarding the presidential debates. Yeah, Greg, so the uh, first presidential debate is tomorrow night, very likely to see record viewership. Uh, So we look back and and to see what impact debates have on the market. So going back to 1960, the S&P 500 has averaged 0.14% to the upside directly following the day uh, following a presidential debate. So, uh, so not a big impact on the overall market, but will have an impact on probably individual sectors. So if it's perceived that Biden won the debate, we'll probably see a boost in stocks related to global trade and then also renewable energy. Uh, if it's perceived that Trump wins, uh, we'll probably see a boost to fossil fuel stocks and defense companies. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, definitely probably see some fireworks tomorrow night. Those are great points in regards to uh, the sectors. And Adam, you interjected about the S&P 500 index, where we currently are in the market. I'm going to ask our viewers to stay with me because all this ties together. Talk about from a technical analysis standpoint and where the the sectors are right now, Adam. Yeah, thanks, Greg. So last week, of course, we talked about the support level of the S&P 500 Mm -hmm. being at 3,300. We saw Friday's close come in at 3,298. Yes. So that 3,300 now becomes our new resistance level. Okay. Um, if we see it break past that level, we could see, you know, 3,330, 3,390 is our next levels. If it goes below that, 3,240 is a number that we're looking at. Um, also, too, to Bobby's point, you know, with the presidential election coming up, it's not just the S&P 500 that we're looking at. We're looking at the individual 11 sectors inside of it. And for the four-week moving average, in fact, all 11 sectors are down. So that is something to keep in mind. That is a trend that we've been seeing. Will that continue? Will we see consumer sentiment kind of come back into play? And how will they react off the election? No, I, I thought that was well said. So Bobby's talked about that certain sectors could react favorably based on the presidential debate. From your standpoint, overall market, or as I like to say, the overall market's like the football field, the different sectors are like the different teams on the field to see who's going to, to possibly uh, benefit from what takes place in the presidential debate. But tying even more of that together, Trey, you brought up from a historical standpoint, the S&P 500 performance can help determine which party keeps the White House. Yeah, that's right. We've mentioned uh, several times on this vlog that how the S&P 500's performance 90 days out from an election is much better predictor than, than most polls. And why it's so interesting to re-look re- at that again today is that on August 3rd, which was 90 days from election day, the S&P 500 closed at 3294. And like Thank Adam you. pointed out, we closed Friday at 3298. So we've a lot's happened since August 3rd. The market's been up a good bit, been down a good bit. Uh, But we're kind of back where we started. So it's almost like that election uh, timetable is restarting right, right in time for the first debate. And that's not on accident. That's probably a lot of a lot of investors bringing the election back into focus and not making a call either way. And so how the election splits, how this poll, uh, how the how things go on the debate could indicate where the S&P is going from here to Election Day. If, if, the, if the S&P is down, ends below that level, uh, then it would predict that uh, Joe Biden would become the president. If it is higher, then that is S&P predicting that uh, President Trump will remain the president. So a lot to happen. Uh, there were 36 days out. Uh, so, you know, time is getting short, but there's still plenty to happen. But it's interesting that going into the first debate, we're right back where we started on August 3rd, pretty much at, at, at even, where the S&P isn't really saying either way who, who is leading right now. Right. So with all the noise, with all the other polls that are out there, the S&P 500 has has been a pretty good indicator on which party keeps the White House. You agree with me? 
That's right. It's going back to 1928. I think it's 87% of elections have been uh, called by the S&P 500. That's a lot better than many pollsters can, can claim. Yeah, and, and, and I think since 1984, it's 100%. If I'm, I, I think I'm correct, correct on that. Right. Yeah, so, so keep that in mind as you're sitting there watching the debates, or if you say, I just don't even want to uh, look at this, uh, just uh, look at these numbers we're sharing with you on the vlog here at Five Plan Partners. And then on top of that, Ashley... Uh, you pulled back the curtain and said, you know what, you can talk about who's going to win the election, but the reality of it is the economic numbers matter. Talk about where we are in, re in relation to economic numbers on consumer and manufacturing. I'm happy to do that, Greg. If you look at September, despite everything you mentioned going on and people having angst around that, our September numbers on consumer expansion were good. Our manufacturing numbers on that expansion, also good. And not only they are in expansion mode, Greg, but the delta of it, you know, how much is picking up, it's getting faster and faster. And in addition to that, our feeling is between now and the end of the year, we've got a good potential for that to continue to happen, particularly on the manufacturing side, Greg, because manufacturers now in the second quarter where they had to draw their inventory down when yes. COVID was really bad, now they're going back in and having to build back up and replace their inventory. So that's going to be a nice tailwind between now and the end of the year. But uh, both numbers look great. Yeah, so you've got an economy despite the 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 debates, the election noise that continues to move forward. And that's what we're going to be watching in terms of corporate earnings, which ultimately reflect in your portfolio on any equity positions. And will also have an impact on where interest rates are and how we move forward despite the COVID situation. So keeping that in mind, we're going to keep you informed. Continue, please, to share this with others. The introductions that you've made by sharing our vlogs mean a lot to us the social media comments that we've gotten and watching us on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter have been great. And we're going to continue throughout this election process, market process, economy, and keep in mind on Thursday, October 1st, we are only 90 days away from the first day of 2021. There's a lot going on. We're going to keep you updated. Thanks for your time and for your belief in us here at Five Plan Partners. Thanks.